Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our After Dark live chat with New York Times bestselling author Julie Kenner. Welcome, Julie. It's great to have you here. Hi. Thanks. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, if you're looking for a night of diversions and delights, then you've come to the right place. Uh, Julie will be answering your burning questions about her 1001 Dark Nights novella, Caress of Darkness. And before we begin, I want to let everyone know that we're giving away a mystery bag full of Julie's favorite things. So check back with us um, on Book Trip after the chat, and please enter to win. Um, so Julie, before we begin our questions, can you tell us more about Caress of Darkness? Sure. Caress of Darkness is the first story in a new series that I'm launching called Dark Pleasures, which is paranormal romance. I've written paranormal romance for um, since the beginning of my career. My, my first single title book um, was paranormal. Um, but those, my earlier stuff was a lot lighter in tone. And, um, you know, while they were a little sexy, they weren't super sexy. So this series mm -hmm. is a lot more like my current contemporary, what I'm writing contemporary these days. So they're very sexy. They're very fun. I've got um, uh, Immortals are sort of the paranormal, um, way into the paranormal world, which I find really um fun and exciting to do and so cool. it's a lot of it's, it's great I'm having a really good time with the series awesome um so Angela says uh what made you decide you wanted to become a writer <laughs> you know I didn't actually decide I wanted to be a writer I <laughs> cannot remember wanting ever really to do anything else as much as I wanted to be a writer my very first um one of my very earliest memories is sitting in my dad's um typewriter we had this house with this spiral staircase and he had this awesome loft office that was his home office and I would go up there and I would sit at his desk and I would bang out these stories on his manual typewriter cool. um I'm dating myself um that <laughs> I mean this is even before I I could spell so they were just like war you know just strings of letters and they were stories they were my books and I would show them to my parents and the first one I actually wrote was a Christmas story so perfect timing awesome and um sold it you know to my to my mom and my dad and you know, they each bought a copy, so it sold out. And so that's what I've always wanted to do. I mean, the real question was how I became a lawyer because I was always wanting to write books. So it's, oh. it's it literally as I'm living, you know, my dream, my original fantasy, which is awesome. Yeah, someone actually mentioned that they said, um, is it true that you're a lawyer as well? Have any of those experiences contributed to your novels? Um, yes and yes. Um, not as directly as you might think. I don't write legal thrillers. I tried when I first got serious about wanting to be published. Um, that was when I was still practicing law and I was a huge fan of John Grisham and Scott Turow. And so I thought, well, I'm going to write a legal thriller and, um, and that will be my entree. And I was kind of burned out at the time on practicing law. I was doing a lot of litigation, which is a lot of back and forth with discovery and a lot of objections and answering interrogatories. And um, so the story was, uh, while it was sexy and cool and had this great mystery, I also kept getting stuck in the minutia of the law. So I was having a hard time with that. Um, so, but a lot of things are pulled from my characters, people I met in the practice of law, and certainly it affects the business aspects of it, which, you know, reading contracts and stuff like that. But yeah, I practiced yeah. for 15 years in, in Texas and Los wow. Angeles and clerked on the Fifth Circuit for a while. So I, I did enjoy it. I had a good, I had a good long stint of being a lawyer, which was a lot of fun. Awesome. Your second life to the uh, readers here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Steph has a question. Um, she says, how did you get involved with the 1001 Dark Knights series? And have you read any of the novellas in the Dark Knights family? <clears throat> I have read some of the novellas in the Dark Knights family. My regret is that I haven't had the chance to read all of them. Unfortunately, my writing schedule is super tight, so I don't read as much as I wish that I could. Um, I'm reading um, Christopher Rice's The Flame right now, which is super awesome, so I highly recommend it. And um, I awesome. got involved because I was invited to join in, and I was so incredibly flattered and thought that it was just a wonderful idea for authors, helping other authors to cross-promote ourselves and to sort of brand the books together and help promote our yeah. brand and introduce readers to um, – our works, I think it's just brilliant, and I'm so excited to be a part of it. I just love it. Love, love, love. Awesome. We're excited to have you here. Um, 
we have some questions specifically about Caress of Darkness. Uh, Natasha wants to know, how is it different from your other novels? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it, I, the easy answer is that all of my novels are different because they all have different characters. And I, I try very hard to write character driven stories. So just like your story is going to be different if you write a story about you and your husband or you and your boyfriend or you and your children, even though you, someone else might be writing a story about them and their boyfriend, them and their children, they're going to be different stories because they're different people. So mm -hmm. I feel like every book that I write has that going for it. You've got, so long as you're writing truly to the characters, even if plots are similar, the stories are going to be similar. In this case, though, I've got actually a lot of difference. I've never done Immortals before. I've um, I've done Vampires, which are Immortal, but these yeah. these guys truly, I didn't want to do Vampires again. I, I've done them, and there's a lot of them out there. And while I love to read a vampire book, I wanted something a little different. And I just think the whole idea of immortality is very um, sexy and yeah. compelling. So I wanted to do that. I wanted to do guys who were insanely wealthy because I think that's a lot of fun. I'm having yeah. a lot of fun writing billionaire books on the contemporary side. I wanted to do that on the paranormal side. I oh. figure, hey, if you're immortal and you're not insanely rich, then you're kind of a loser because you sort of missed the boat somewhere. Um, <laughs> so that's fun. But in that respect, they're a little bit the same because I've got that sort of you know, dark and dangerous and rich yeah. vibe going on. So that's a similarity, but it's executed right. in a different fashion. So, you know, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, did you feel a strong connection to any of the characters uh, while writing the book? Was there like a particular you know, one I, that I kind always, of? I always feel a strong connection to the characters. I think that it's very difficult to write a book and not, Feel that connection. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm not an actress. I would probably hide under the bed if someone told me that I had to perform on stage. But I <laughs> think that to a certain extent, I approach writing like actors approach acting, where you sort of become the character that you're writing. And I think that's right. particularly true if you write in first person, which I do a lot. This this book is told in um, first person, which is I, 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 I. And also third person, which is he, she. So we've got the heroine's point oh, of view is, is I, and the hero's point of view is he or she. So especially with first person, there's a really intense connection because while you're not actually becoming the character, you're certainly stepping in their shoes in a really um, intimate sort of way. And then hopefully the reader is too. Hopefully the reader's connecting with the character that way as well. And um, I'm always sad when I finish a book. I'm always sad but excited at the same time because it's nice to know that you know it's done but some of them are harder to some of them are harder to leave behind than others mm -hmm. and i'm really excited that this is the first book in this series because i'm not ready to leave this world or these characters behind right now it's interesting when you're working on characters and there's kind of a story forming like how do you know when the story is kind of done is it just like this feeling or do you map things out are you like a seat of your pants writer <laughs> That's a, you know, that's, that's a strangely hard question for me. Um, yeah. I'm a little bit of both. I, I can't write a book unless I know the beginning and the middle and the end. It's like when I'm giving <laughs> writing workshops, I, I will describe that as going on a trip. It's like if I'm going to go to New York City, I know that mm -hmm. I'm starting in Texas. That's my beginning right. point, And I'm going to end up in New York. Now, it's quite possible that during the journey, I'm going to go to Los Angeles and it's going to be this really long, indirect kind of convoluted journey, but I still know where I'm, where I'm going. And so what I tend to do when I'm, when I'm, before I write the story, I usually write some sort of an outline, even if it's just a blurb that kind of gives me the overall arch. And then I'll kind of follow those plot points as I write. Um, but things get, you know, things get changed up. But, but so long as I know the beginning point and the end point, I don't um, lose my mind and go crazy and start freaking out about the book. It's uh, the couple of times that I've freaked out about a book is when something has changed and I don't think it's going to end where I thought it was going to end, and that just completely mm -hmm. throws me off my game. Yeah, it's understandable. Um, <laughs> Natasha, <laughs> Natasha um, wants to know about your writing schedule. Do you prefer writing at night in the morning? Do you have a writing schedule that you try to stick to, or is it? kind of a random process. I try to stick to writing in the morning 
and then also writing in the evening. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the nice things about working at home and writing full time now is that I don't have to, you know, sneak time to write during my lunch hour and spend three hours after work when I'm exhausted, you know, trying to mm -hmm. write and squeeze it in. And then the downside is, is that I don't have to do that anymore. And so sometimes time expands to fill a vacuum and suddenly you realize that you've managed to waste the entire morning doing laundry that maybe didn't need to be done, but you were procrastinating. So mm -hmm. I aspire to a morning and evening schedule, um, get up in the morning, answer some emails and then work and then work at night. I used to prefer working at night and, um, and now I'm finding it harder and harder to stay up after midnight, whereas, you know, 11 to 2 used to be prime writing time. Now it's mm -hmm. prime sleeping time. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, how long did it take you to write Caress of Darkness? Um, did you ever feel like you wouldn't get it done in time? Was it, you know, how was the, the process with that particular book? You know, my process is so different for all of them. And, um, no, I always knew that I would, would you know, get it in on time and that we would ha be ready to go. But um, I, I was pushing the wire with the story a little bit. I kept wanting to fiddle with things and play with it and, you know, beef stuff up. But I'm that's kind of my process, too. I, when I get down to the end of the book, I start to see, th see more and more and more things and want to flesh them out more and more. So in those last few days when I'm writing a book, it's very hard for me to, um, to let it go. I have a feeling I'll be the same way when my kids go off to college. It's like, no, you're not quite cooked yet. I can't let you go yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's the baby. I know baby. it is. All my babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Shauna says, have you ever had to turn the heat down in one of your books? Um, and if so, how did you deal with uh, a steamy, too steamy scene? Is it never too I steamy? Honestly, <laughs> I honestly do not remember any time when I have had to turn the heat down. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means I don't remember it. I'm really trying to think, and I'm, I don't, I, do, I, do, I don't think I ever have. I really don't. I really don't. You blocked Sorry. it from your memory. <laughs> You're like, I'm just going to keep well, it the I'm way right, it is. Right. I write pretty hot. So far, you know, so far we haven't really had to go had to go that direction yet. Right. What's the fun in that, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> um, so what are some things you like to do when you're not writing? Oh gosh. Um I love to travel. Love, 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 love to travel. Oh. I um traveled for work a lot this year, a little bit more than I probably should have because um I was on the road a lot this year, but it was a lot of fun. Oh. But um I like just taking like day trips with the family to small towns in Texas. Mm -hmm. There's lots of places to explore. I love going to Europe. Um, my oldest daughter recently got certified to scuba dive. So we took a trip recently and she and I dove, which is fun. I oh, that's have been waiting for her to get old enough to do that because my husband doesn't dive. So it's like I have a dive partner again. Mm -hmm. um, I love to go biking. Um, I love photography, but I've, and I've got, bought myself a new camera recently and haven't really had time to get back into it. My undergraduate degree was film and I'd taken a few photography courses and it's one of those things that I aspire to be good at and, mm -hmm. and I'm not, but it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, yeah, that's all that matters. Right? Reading. I love to, I mean, I mm -hmm. love to read, but I, I do that whether I have time or not, although not as much as I wish I did. I, I read a lot of audiobooks because I find it so difficult to, um, get the time to actually sit down with a book now that I tend to right. read a lot of books on audio when I'm walking around the house, doing all that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, Emily wants to know what are some books that you're reading or some things on your uh, must read list? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> my mind goes blank every time I get that question. Let me think I can, I can't open a screen here cause I'll lose everything right now. I'm actually, um, listening to um looking for alaska by um john green um oh, yeah and recommended by my daughter and it's really good um i just finished um and i promised that i did not pick this because there's a movie i have been meaning well probably i did actually but i've had it on my kindle for a really long time um if i stay gail foreman's yeah. book which was um mm -hmm. which was excellent um 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 uh, 
I'm on. I know. I have I have the there issue where many, I always there are for way too many. I always forget the author's name of the book that I'm reading. I'm like, it's fine. Yeah, I swear to God, hang on. I do that as well. <laughs> I know well. it's like I've read so many books and, and tons of books out there. I'll make a list. Yeah. And put it on my website or something. Ooh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so. Katie wants to know, do friends and family read your books, and uh, do you ever get shy when it comes to the more uh, steamy, raunchy scenes? <laughs> I used to. I um, After I wrote, the, the Release Me and the Start Trilogy was um, a huge step up in heat level for me. I had written for Harlequin Temptation and Blaze, which are pretty steamy, um, but mm -hmm. we jumped a notch with these books. And, um, oh, wow. So I, I used to, but um, you, you kind of have to get over that. So no, yep. you know, I, I, I really don't get shy anymore. The, I'll tell you, the only time I was ever really shy was before I was published. Um, mm -hmm. And I wrote um, what was going to be my first book, which was The Harlequin Temptation. So it had, oh my God, sex in it. Um, <laughs> and I let my mother read it before I submitted it. And um, that was kind of how I knew that I was ready to like try and send things out and be published because I was able to let my mother read it. Now she passes my books, like the current books around the nursing home she lives in. So I'm totally <laughs> over any shyness. <laughs> it's over. That's amazing. <laughs> can't go there. <laughs> they are the most entertained nursing home. <laughs> I know. Ever. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> um, so if you could describe Crest of Darkness, you know, in one word to, to readers, what would you, how would you describe it? That's a tough one. Ooh, I'm going to do a hyphenated word um, and mm. a slightly made up word too. We can call it um, sexily romantic because <laughs> there's, I have a reason for that. Um, because it's, it's, it's a very steamy book. There's a lot of, of intense sexual tension going on between the characters, but they're really very deeply, deeply, deeply in love. And so there is mm -hmm. an intense romance that, that supports the sex and the sexual tension. Mm -hmm. So I'm going with sexily hyphen romantic, the new word. I like it. Go out and use it I every like day. It. <laughs> um, Jared wants to know where did the name Rainer come from? And uh, he loves it. And how do you come up with one with character names in general? Do you have any process for that? You know, character names are so hard, um, especially guy names, because, you know, you want them yeah. to be sexy. And for these guys, they're immortal. So I needed a name that that at least sounded like it was, you know, pretty old. Um, I my go to for guys is um, uh, is going to like, you know, not the baby books, but the equivalent of baby book websites yeah. and just looking mm -hmm. through them. Um, I don't specifically remember where Rainer came from, but I liked Rain as the as the um, the nickname because mm -hmm. you know Rain is very intense. It can be light and soothing. It can be dark and kind of scary if you're talking thunderstorms. So it has kind of these connotations to it that I really liked. Um, uh, yeah. Lately, I've been looking at credits in movies to sort of. Oh, look that's at a names good idea. and possible names. I have a, and I also I have to be very careful because I apparently have a thing for C's. I wrote a book one time and realized that all the characters' names started with a C, <laughs> and I had to go back and give everybody new names, and that was a problem. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, it, I like, it's hard to come up with names. Mm -hmm. I like Rainer. It's nice and masculine. I do like that. Thank you. I like it too. Speaking of movie credits and just movies in general, do you have a favorite book to movie adaptation? Is there anything out there that someone asked me that recently on um, like a blog or something, and I actually came up with answers. And once again, my mind is blank. Um, I thought Gone Girl did a really good job. I was I was yes. impressed with um, the the the. Um, very good. Not the accuracy. That's that's not the word I'm looking for, but how well the book adapted to um to the screen. I haven't seen If I Stay yet, so I can't comment on that. Mm -hmm. Um Gone with the Wind. You know what? I think Gone with the Wind mm -hmm. was a brilliant adaptation and um The Princess Bride, brilliant adaptation. Yes. They're both different and yet it's there. It's it is the story and it's there and it was brilliantly done. And I'm sure there's some more 
Um, the Big Sleep. That's a really good yeah. adaptation. Um, yeah. Oh, there's more. There's a million of them, I'm sure. That that. Um, oh, oh yeah. Blade Runner. You know, Blade Runner's awesome. Yeah, that's I mean, it's a, a brilliant one. movie. It's a lot different than the book, though. So, I mean, it's one where they took the book, and mm -hmm. I, I personally, I think the movie's better, which is rare for me. Usually, I like the book better, but I actually like the movie Blade better, better than the book. Huh. Interesting. There must be more. I, I didn't read Interview the book. Interview with the Vampire? I, I thought Interview with the Vampire was good. That was a good adaptation. Yeah. See, now I'm on a roll here. I could probably think I like <laughs> I'm a big movie watcher. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Um, so... Oh, I had a question of my own, and now I, oh, I just forgot it. What was it? Okay. <sighs> anyway, we'll go to another one from someone else, and I'll remember it. <laughs> Shauna wants to know, um, considering your background, would you ever consider writing legal thrillers? Because they're kind of, you know, they're pretty in these days. What do you think about that? You know, I probably would not, just because, as I told my old boss when I asked him, you know, I hired him recently to do something for me, you know, legal related. And, um, you know, I was sitting here like emailing him, him these stupid questions that I should know the mm -hmm. answer to. And also asking him questions for when I have legal things come up in various books where I sometimes have, you know, and I'm like, you know, I have flushed this from my brain. There's only so much room in my head. And if I'm <laughs> having a character over here who's doing something else altogether, then, you know, the intricacies of diversity jurisdiction are just going to fly out this way. So right. probably not. Um, I might do a legal thriller light, you know, kind of like a police procedure, police procedural light where you don't really get too heavy into yeah. it. But, but mm -hmm. I, it, it's, it is, there are many, many, many things on my, I want to write list and legal thrillers actually pretty yeah. low on it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what's higher on the list of the kind of genre you would want to play I have, with? Um, I have um I have an I've got a couple of ideas for young adults that I would really, really love to write because my oh. kids are the right age and it would be great to have mm -hmm. them out there before they're no longer the right age. Um and then I have a, a couple of mainstream, you know, mainstream women's fiction y kind of, you know, Jody Picaultish kind of ideas that yeah. I think would be great to write. And there's just so many ideas out there, you know, yeah. it's like, there's not enough hours in the day to do, I know. write all the stories I would love to write. Awesome. I remembered my question. So for anyone who hasn't read the novella yet, I, know, I knew it would come back. Um, if you're, if they're not familiar with the character or the story. So what, what exactly is, you were talking about the vampires and the immortals. What, you know, what does an immortal look like a person, a real person? Is there something about them? Oh, yeah. that sets these, them apart? They, are completely, they are completely and totally human. They just, these particular guys for reasons that really are more clear, uh, become clear in the story. They come from a different you know, dimension. Um, cool. And back in the day when they got here, they had to take human form. So, they are completely ah. human now. They've they've been here for so long that they're more human than what they were before. So there's but but awesome. and they can be killed. But when they're it's called um they're, they're they call themselves the Phoenix Brotherhood because when they when they are killed they rise again from the ashes to become human again and um until oh. such time as they basically solve the problem that they're here trying to solve, which is a very loose backdrop for the whole series that you know uh -huh. so there's stuff going on in the background but each story stands alone so it's cool. a lot of fun is, it's got it's got there... a lot of it's, sorry oh go ahead go ahead i was gonna say it's got a um intricate backstory back history but it, you can pop in anywhere in the series and understand what's going on because each story is character driven and not plot driven so which is cool. makes it a lot of fun to write because then you know kind of what the foundation is it's like building a house there's that foundation but we're really concerned about what's going on and you know the third room upstairs on the left so right. that's kind of the way i've structured the series awesome um is there you were saying they can be killed is there only one way they can be, they can be killed you know stake through the heart is there something specific no, or? No, they can they can they can just they can just be killed but they will rise again there's a way that they can be killed and not rise again, but that's a spoiler. Don't mind. Ah, okay. <laughs> no spoilers. 
Um, so in what genre would you consider your work to be placed in? Would it, is it just erotica type of, is there like my, a uh, different if you term that you would want to? work, then no, I've got, the Caress of Darkness is, uh, is erotic paranormal romance. And it's, um, yeah. and I think there's a difference between erotica and erotic romance. And I definitely write mm -hmm. erotic romance. So, um, mm -hmm. And then, so that's the stuff that's on the Jay Kenner side and the, and the Julie Kenner side with the paranormal. But I also write um, urban fantasy. I have a series that's urban fantasy that's got, awesome. it's very light on the romance, but it has some. Um, and then I have my Demon Hunting Soccer Mom series that is sort of that's its own awesome. genre. It's paranormal Mommy Lit. And, um, and so that's oh, fun. Amazing. So I, I write, I guess everything, if you had to put everything under one big umbrella it would be um women's fiction although i've written outside of women's fiction as well but not very often so you've written a little bit of everything i'd say a little <laughs> very bit, close yeah. yeah so carrie ryan has a question she says can you tell us more about what's coming up next in your world <laughs> and with a thousand and one dark nights for you yes absolutely um so next is um cal um sorry Mal and Christina's story. Um, cool. And you meet Mal in uh, Caress of Darkness. And those are um, next in the series. It's a trilogy of novellas that form one overarching story. They, it's a story that arches over three novellas. Um, and then those are coming out in January, back to back over the course of three weeks. And then um, in my next 1001 Dark Nights, and I'm embarrassed to say that I cannot remember the release date. I think it's April is um, uh, Dante's story. And you meet him um, briefly in Caress of Darkness as well. So, and then um, after that, I'm hoping to do more. So, um, but I don't have them planned out or scheduled yet. So I'm excited. So you're busy <laughs> for sure. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Kristen wants to know what suggestions would you give someone who is interested in writing an erotic novel or erotic romance? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm keying in on the erotic part of this question. So I'm, so I'm okay. assuming that that is really what she's interested in is that you're interested in writing an erotic, not an erotic. And I'm going to go with romance too, because I, because that's really what I feel yeah. comfortable speaking with. Um, sure. As crazy as it sounds, it's not about the sex. The sex mm -hmm. is really, really, really important, obviously, and it's not going to be an erotic romance if you could pull the sex out and still have a story. Right. That if you can pull the sex out and still have a story, it's something else. It's, it's a romance. It's not an erotic romance. But ultimately, while you want the sex to be hot, you, there obviously has to be sex. It's really much right. more about the characters and, and how mm -hmm. they interact most and I would say that generally in pretty much every erotic romance that I've read, it's it's that how they work through their relationship in a, in a sexual way. So, right. so it's all about the characters. It's, it's, it don't, don't think that you have to, you know, use a certain type of sex or a certain type of kink or a certain type of fetish or whatever, you know, your thing may be. It, it's, it's let the characters drive the story and let that come from the characters as opposed to the other way around. So that would be my, my biggest bit of advice. Um, and, you know, my, and my advice also always is to um, write a lot. So you find your voice and read a lot. Mm -hmm. So you, yeah, you feed your muse. Excellent advice. Um, Jared has some great questions. Um, he's two actually that I really like here. Um, he says, have you had any funny moments as a writer or just most memorable moments? Funny moments as a writer. Um, I'm sure I have. I've probably had embarrassing moments too. Um, <laughs> oh man, these are hard questions. It's a great question, but it's a right. hard one. Um, I had some, um, oh, I feel like, I feel like there's something right there on the tip of my tongue and I can't think of <laughs> it what is. it is. I was, in, I was recognized on, I've been recognized on the street a couple of times at Dragon Con, which is always exciting. So, um, oh, that's that was awesome. cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, have you noticed that a lot? Like, does it more happen more and more often that people recognize nah, you? Must I, be really... I mean, I, I live in a, I live in a really <laughs> small town. So my, my picture has been in the newspaper and nobody, oops, I just died to kill my screen. 
um, and no one <laughs> recognizes me. So, which I think is actually great. I don't think I could ever be, you know, like a film or television star. That just seems right. nuts that people would yeah, right. watch you walking down the Very street intense. and know who you are. Actually, that, that I, I, I take it back. That was a funny moment. So a few years ago, I can't remember why, but I, I had the front page spread of the life and style section in our mm -hmm. community. And um, the next day, or that day, the day that it came out in the paper, I went to the grocery store, unshowered, you know, <laughs> just had worked out. I'm sweaty. I hadn't taken a shower. I'm sitting there. I think that I was wearing the wrong glasses, too, so I couldn't even really see very well because I'd, like, left the house in my reading glasses instead of my computer glasses instead of. And I'm in the grocery aisle. No, no. I was buying beer for my husband, so I'm actually in the beer <laughs> aisle. And this woman comes up to me and goes, you were in the paper. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, oh, now no. you see me. Oh my God. So yeah, that, that was, a, that was embarrassing, but, um, <laughs> but kind of cool. Too. It's a good, yeah, embarrassing, but cool. Awesome. Um, Scott Romanski, um, says as someone new to your work, where would you suggest I start reading where or what? Well, <laughs> Caressive Darkness is right there. So I think that would be a great start if you like paranormal. Um, exactly. If you are more interested in um, um, just straight contemporary, I'd start with the Stark Trilogy, um, yeah. which is Release Me's the first one. And then that's assuming that you like sexy. Um, yes. You know, I'm assuming you're a guy because your name's Scott. Not all guys want to read erotic romance. It's <laughs> definitely a genre that skews to women, but I do have a lot of guy readers. Um, um, oh, interesting. With my Hunting Soccer Mom series. So that's, that's oh, wow. one that you can go to as well. The first one there is Carpe Demon. De completely different oh. tones. I mean, it is light and funny and very sarcastic first person, whereas the stuff that I write on the erotic side has a different feel to it. My, my voice has a different feel. So It's so unique. Why do you think men gravitate towards that, that particular but it's not uh, series? I mean, it's, it's not romance. So um, I think that, I think that while a lot of men would enjoy romance, if they would pick it up, they, they don't because it's not manly. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I, it, it was originally published as sci-fi fantasy. So I think that it just mm -hmm. sort of, um, you know, kind of skewed to that genre. And cool. It's lots of action and adventure, fighting, stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. Uh, Jared has one last question, and I think this is going to wrap up for, for us right. tonight. Um, if readers could only take one thing away from Cress of Darkness, uh, what would you want it to be? <laughs> only one thing. Um... I know. Hey, it could be. The power, hey. the, pow the, power of the power of true love. Because this is very mm -hmm. much a true love book. So I would I would have them take away that. That there is a power to true love. Awesome. Well, it has been a fantastic time talking to you about your new book. And we're so excited that you came to join us. And I want to remind so everyone we have. Me. Yeah. It was a fun time, and we have a giveaway. We have a bag of uh, Julie's favorite things, which, you know, we do this for every After Dark Live chat. It has awesome stuff inside, so please enter to win. And once again, have a great evening, and thanks for joining. Thanks Bye, everybody. So Bye. Bye-bye.